when we interviewed you in Minneapolis some months ago, you made a, a comment to the effect that a debt was owed to the drunken Indians for, as I took it at the time, for maybe opening a path that later led to activists today. I don't know if you recall this, but I was curious to hear more about that. Well, about the whole idea of the drunken Indian, I mean, I don't remember what I said before, but, but I know without them, we wouldn't be here today, the native peoples. I mean that because there was a time as a native person in this in America, I mean obviously we went from being the only people here to where we became the enemy of the people who came to take it away from us. And, and you know, and, and this is what genocide and manifest destiny was all about. So we, we had that experience. And then by the 1900s, by the beginning of the 1900s, pretty much we had all been, been, been uh, confined and contained into reservations or whatever. And, in, and then taken off into the educational religious systems as children taken away. And, 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 and as, as that was happening, being taken, taking the children away... And this was, an was not an aberration. Taking the children of the native people, was, that was the standard. So by, and feeding them off into the religious educational systems. So basically, they were telling these, now the native people that we couldn't be who we were anymore, Indian. We couldn't be Indians. We needed to be white. And uh, And I think that what... So here we were, historically speaking, in a situation where we couldn't be who we were and we didn't want to be, <laughs> right, who our oppressor wanted us to be. So I think that that's what that, that, whole, that whole period of that so-called, that whole period of that drunken Indian time, that so-called period of time where the drunken Indian, where that image and that stereotypical thing came. But this is the Indian that saved us. Because this is the Indian that said, I'm not going to, you, you won't, I can't be who I am, and I'm not going to be who you tell me to be, so I'll just be nothing, <laughs> I'll be something else. I'll just do my time and get through it. I'll erase, I'll erase the pain and I'll just do what I have to to get through it, but I will not become you. And really I think that, you know, and I, I think, because, and I think that they're the ones who saved, <laughs> saved something about us as native people by refusing to submit, this was their rebellion, this was their way. You know, and then later when the activists came along, see, I always felt that we owe, that they made it, they made it possible for us activists later, because if they hadn't taken that route, they would have had to become, have the white mind, or be destroyed from trying to be who they really are. So they protected the identity of who they really were, right? through this mask, wearing this disguise. I'm a human being, you will not recognize me as a human being, as who I truly am, so I will be, I will hide that, because I will hide that behind this, so that you don't kill me. <laughs>